Hello, I'm Adrian, and today we're taking an in-depth look at Scorpion's fighting style in Mortal Kombat. Scorpion, or Hanzo Hasashi, is a ninja specter seeking vengeance against those responsible for the destruction of his clan and the death of his family. He is without a doubt one of the most popular characters within the Mortal Kombat franchise and has appeared as a playable character in every Mortal Kombat game with exception to the original Mortal Kombat 3. He's also the official mascot for NetherRealm Studios, and they've even dressed up as him for Halloween. After a small hiatus, Mortal Kombat returned in 2011 in the critically acclaimed and highly successful reboot Mortal Kombat, also known as Mortal Kombat 9. And that's the version of Scorpion we will be focusing on during this video. I will analyze every unique move he exhibits in this game. If you're a fan of action films and video games, I highly recommend subscribing to my channel and watching my other videos, as I've already analyzed other awesome video game fighters including Nathan Drake from the Uncharted series and Solid Snake from the Metal Gear series. But today we will be focusing exclusively on Scorpion. The goal of these videos is to figure out just how many fighting styles our combatants is familiar with by analyzing the specific moves featured in their footage and pairing them with the martial art or fighting style which most aptly represents those moves. There's a huge amount of crossover in martial arts techniques, and a technique that is present in one fighting style may also be present in another, such as a roundhouse kick being present in multiple martial arts. But in order to not give combatants multiple fighting styles for the sake of variety, I have instead opted to list the most apt fighting style that best represents that particular character, technique, or set of techniques. I highly recommend playing Mortal Kombat 9 as this video will analyze footage from that game. Finding styles that Scorpion may know in any other form of media or other games in the series do not count. Without further ado, let's take a look at how many fighting styles Scorpion knows. Before Scorpion even begins to move, we can already gather a great deal of information based on his fighting stance alone. For now, the important thing to note is his very wide fighting stance that's off to the side. You've seen his fighting stance before, and that is with Taekwondo. Though competitors at the Olympics tend to keep their arms down, the leg placement is what we're looking at here. By standing off to the side, as opposed to squaring up, you're minimizing yourself as a target. Besides being the most optimal in terms of launching kicks, gives less of a striking area to your opponent as you're hiding your chest and stomach off to the side as opposed to having them front and center. Furthermore, in this particular case, Scorpion is in what is known as an open stance with his opponent. This occurs when the combatants favor different kicking legs. Scorpion on the left currently favors his right leg, as it's behind his left leg, while Scorpion on the right favors his left leg, as it's behind his right leg. A very common move in Taekwondo is to switch your fighting stance, and Scorpion is very easily able to do this. In no time he can switch his leg placement with a small hop and change into a closed fighting stance with his opponent, since now both their favorite kicking legs are the same, making them appear closed off to one another, hence the name. But before we assign Taekwondo's style to Scorpion, we need to consult his actual Mortal Kombat background. And one of Scorpion's official fighting styles for Mortal Kombat 9 is Hapkido. Hapkido is a very eclectic Korean martial art that shares many similarities to Taekwondo, but incorporates several techniques from other martial arts, including joint locks and throws, to make it a more well-rounded fighting style. So let's take a look at Scorpion's moves and see Hapkido in action. Probably the best place to start would be to look at Scorpion's various different kicks in the game. First up is a sidekick, or Yop Chagi. The sidekick is one of the most powerful kicks in Hapkido. It's seen in other martial arts as well, but the fundamentals of the technique always remain the same. Tuck in your knee and then extend it with as much strength as possible, trying to keep your leg in a straight line for maximum impact, just like Scorpion. Furthermore, he then tucks in his leg once more before placing his foot on the ground. This is key in executing a great kick, as you don't want to just let your foot fall to the ground. For one of his aerial attacks, Scorpion executes the same technique, just with an added jump and flip. Next up is an axe kick, or Nario Chagi. The axe kick is executed by raising your leg as high as you can and then bringing it down with as much strength as possible. It has variations as well. The impact can be with the ball of your foot as opposed to your heel and you can also choose to bend the leg before raising it, like Scorpion does, or raise it as straight up as you can and bring it back down. Scorpion's technique incorporates a small sideways hop in the beginning, a common technique to gain more horizontal distance on your opponent. The technique you're seeing right now is known as a jump spin hook kick, or Idan Dui Horyo Chagi. You execute the kick by jumping and twisting in the air and then using your momentum, swing your leg out in a hook-like motion, striking with the bottom of your foot. This kick can also be performed without a jump and is known as a spin hook kick, or Dui Horyo Chagi, as well as a spinning heel kick, or Dui Dora Chagi. There are tons of variations for this technique. It can be more upright, as is typically done in Taekwondo, with more of an angle, as seen in Hapkido, and you can even incorporate some assistance by stretching out your hand typically seen in capoeira, but not unheard of in other martial arts, such as Hapkido, as even Scorpion is incorporating it in this instance. 
A pretty key difference between Taekwondo and Hapkido is that there is a much wider variety in low kicking techniques in Hapkido than there is in Taekwondo, and Scorpion happens to demonstrate that with several moves. First up is probably the most common kick across all of martial arts, and that is the roundhouse kick, or Dolio Chagi. You basically lift your leg and snap it outward, making sure to twist while you're doing so to give it that arc where it comes in at its target horizontally as opposed to vertically, like the front kick. It's extremely versatile and has many variations. Scorpion's variation is the one typically seen in Kapkido, where you aim to kick much lower than the head or stomach and are actually aiming at your opponent's legs. This kick is one of the most popular tripping techniques in video games, and it's known as a sweep kick, a low spinning heel kick, or Anja Duidora Chagi in Hapkido. You spin on the ball of your foot and make sure to swing your way through the target in order to pull off the full 360 and not let your legs stop at the 180 mark. The next technique is a very low roundhouse kick, or Jun Mion Chago. The technique of the roundhouse remains the same, you just make sure to execute it very near the floor and can use your hand or hands to support yourself. Scorpion executes the roundhouse with his target being a little higher off the ground than usual. This is a modified sidekick thrown from a crouching position. This combo incorporates the sidekick, which we have already seen, followed by a higher sidekick, and from there Scorpion smoothly transitions into a jumping front kick. Note how he uses a leg that he already has in the air to help him jump into the front kick. This leg takedown is known as a scissor kick takedown in Hapkido, and is also seen in Judo where it has a name of Kani Basami. It's a throwing technique where you sandwich your opponent's abdomen and legs between your legs and throw them in a sacrificing movement. Moving on to Scorpion's punching techniques, it seems like a great time to introduce a concept of ninjutsu as it will begin to show itself in his fighting style. Scorpion is, as one can easily tell, a ninja. And to put it very simply, the art of being a ninja is known as ninjutsu. Ninjutsu is an umbrella term martial art, meaning that it comprises a host of styles. According to Bujinkan members, the 18 disciplines that comprise ninjutsu were first stated in the scrolls of Daga Kureyu and became definitive for all ninjutsu schools. And those 18 skills actually form their very own set of umbrellas. I know, it can get a little overwhelming when you think about it. Therefore, although Scorpion is listed as knowing ninjutsu in official Mortal Kombat lore, we're going to get a bit more specific and see which exact distinct styles within the umbrella of ninjutsu he demonstrates knowledge in. In other words, he won't receive ninjutsu as a fighting style in his final tally. He will instead receive the styles that he displays knowledge of that are within ninjutsu. So what exactly are those styles within ninjutsu? Probably the easiest one to begin with is taijutsu. Taijutsu is a Japanese blanket term that means unarmed combat using one's body as the only weapon. Considering Scorpion employs punches, kicks, and throws, it's pretty obvious that he is skilled in this area. Let's take a look at a technique that demonstrates ninjutsu. Scorpion's striking technique here is a jab, but one that is very different from boxing's jab. Instead of releasing his jab by his face, he is releasing it from his hip. And not only that, he does not twist his wrist in order to hit the target horizontally as you would see in other styles. He keeps his hand in a vertical position and there is no twisting movement involved. This is exactly how the jab can be executed with a ninjutsu. The same principle and technique is applied in this jab, he's just executing it while crouched. His next punch is a highly stylized hook, or as it's colloquially known, a haymaker. But before grouping this with boxing, in Scorpion's case, Hapkido and even Ninjutsu are both known to sometimes incorporate boxing style punches within their training. Note too how Scorpion's other hand chambers by his waist when he launches a punch, echoing his Hapkido training as opposed to being by his cheek if this were a traditional boxing hook. This is probably the move that every person who has ever played Mortal Kombat knows how to execute in the game and is a good ol' uppercut present in several fighting styles including boxing and of course seen in Kapkido. His aerial punches are extremely stylized crosses or hooks with a downward intent. Scorpion begins this combo by throwing his ninjutsu jab and follows it up with a downward elbow strike. Although elbow techniques are frequently seen in Muay Thai, it makes much more sense to group this with Hapkido in this instance, as elbows are also incorporated into Hapkido training. He finishes his combo with an uppercut. Scorpion can also modify his 3 hit combo by including a spin hook kick at the end as opposed to an uppercut. Note how in this variation of the spin hook, he opts to not use his hand as support as he did earlier, showing how you can always vary up a technique depending on the situation at hand. This 2 hit combo introduces another ninjutsu technique. After throwing his hook, he follows this up with a shoulder check. What he's doing here is using his whole body as a weapon, and the technique is known as Taiken within ninjutsu. Scorpion will also readily use the swords on his back in combat. 
In ninjutsu, the style dedicated to sword fighting is known as Kenjutsu, which comprises a host of sword techniques, several of which can be seen on display with Scorpion. He can also combine his use of the sword with his hand-to-hand -hand techniques, such as in this combo right here, in which he executes a hook, an uppercut, and follows it with a sword slash. And now we can start venturing into Scorpion's more fantastical fighting techniques. In this combo, after using the sword, Scorpion shoots out an incredible backflip kick. This kind of technique is usually reserved for demos only, but is readily seen in Capkido. Sadly, you actually have to jump to perform it in real life, and can't rely on spontaneously generating fire to lift you upward like Scorpion does. This is because Scorpion is immune to the Nether Realm's variant of fire, which is known as Hellfire. This is one of Scorpion's supernatural powers. He can summon fire, light himself up on it, and also light others up with it as one of his special moves. He incorporates this into his teleporting ability, as seen here. He can literally vanish from where he is, only to reappear someplace else a moment later, and can incorporate his fire manipulation abilities into the technique as well. He can do it multiple times in a row, and when he incorporates even more Hellfire into it, he unleashes an additional uppercut after his devastating hook. As a matter of fact, Scorpion can imbue fire in a couple of his techniques. Returning to Ninjutsu, Scorpion is showing elements of both Kayaku Jutsu and Inton Jutsu, just in a particular way we haven't seen before on fighting styles. Kayaku Jutsu means the art of gunpowder. It relates to pyrotechnics and explosives, while Inton Jutsu refers to the art of escaping and concealment. Actual ninjas had to learn ways to make it seem like one moment they were there and the next they weren't, while Scorpion takes this to the next level and can actually disappear displaying a very literal interpretation of Inton Jutsu. Scorpion also doesn't have to master gunpowder to create pyrotechnical tools. He is capable of summoning explosive fire out of nowhere, once again putting a literal spin on Kaioku Jutsu. All of this brings us to Scorpion's most famous and iconic weapon known simply as a spear in Mortal Kombat lore, which is a kunai that is attached to a rope or metal chain. In the 90s film it springs from his hand, but in the game it's an actual chain weapon that is incredibly versatile, allowing him to bring opponents from afar or throw them in different directions, sometimes accompanied by a front kick. His spear is based off a Chinese weapon known as a rope dart or shen biao. And in terms of how it relates to ninjutsu, while one could potentially ascribe it to shurikenjutsu, as that is the art of throwing small blades, this one is attached to a chain, turning it into a very different weapon. It much more closely resembles the ninja sickle, or chain and sickle weapon, which has its own dedicated art within ninjutsu known as kusari gama jutsu. He can combine his skills in that art with his skills in gaioku jutsu, and is capable of lighting two spears up in flames before they even reach their target. Scorpion does have a pretty theatrical throw here, but he's literally just grabbing his opponent and spinning him around before throwing him, albeit with quite a bit of style. His x-ray moves and fatalities are also a combination of all the skills that we've just broken down and analyzed. As you've seen throughout the video, Scorpion incorporates punching techniques into his fighting style that are present in several martial arts, one of them being boxing. And I'm happy to tell you guys that you too can learn the basics of boxing with an informative series on Skillshare called Intro to Boxing. I personally find the videos an excellent reference to brush up on my boxing technique, as it goes over core concepts in footwork and balance, strength and conditioning drills, and useful punching combinations. 2020 could be a year where you explore new skills with Skillshare's online classes. It's an online learning community that offers membership with meaning, and it empowers to accomplish real growth. Most classes are also under 60 minutes, with short lessons, so you don't feel overwhelmed and can learn at your own pace. And if you'd like to learn about something other than martial arts, Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people, on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. In the film and video category alone, there are classes on editing, cinematography, and do-it-yourself filming. So if learning martial arts or any other topic on Skillshare without pricey in-person classes interests you, the first 500 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get two free months of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Furthermore, for less than $10 a month, you can get an annual subscription and become a member. Returning to the topic at hand, how many fighting styles does Scorpion know in Mortal Kombat 9? They are Hapkido, Taijutsu, Genjutsu, Kayakujutsu, Intonjutsu, and Kusarigamajutsu. For a grand total of six fighting styles! This episode of Fighting Styles was sponsored by Skillshare. I'd like to thank each one of my Patreon members, as their contribution helped in the making of this video. If you'd like to contribute and appear in the credits in the future, my Patreon page is Godzilla Rex and it's in the description below. What do you think of the Mortal Kombat games? What other characters should I analyze next? Let me know in the comments below, subscribe for more awesome videos, and see you next time.